Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, things seem to be heating up to a certain extent when it comes to Russia, Ukraine, and of course the United States. At least the rhetoric is. Uh, and it's all due to the fact that, uh, well, the Kremlin was struck or nearly struck by some drones a couple of days ago. And over the last several days, it seems like about every day, uh, a drone is striking a site inside Russia. Uh, Russia has made the accusations that they have evidence uh, that the drones that were uh, supposed to strike um, the Kremlin uh, were, were orchestrated in part by the United States. They said that they believe and they have evidence, they claim, uh, that it's possible that some type of special operations unit was coordinating uh, that event. They also said that, that uh, they take that as an attempt upon uh, Vladimir Putin's life. Now, this stuff is not coming, uh, the, the, what I just said, their claims aren't necessarily coming from their media or just random officials, but from the actual spokesperson of Vladimir Putin. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty major deal. Um, and one of the reasons why I say I think it's a major deal is because the media is pretty silent on this one. They're not saying too much. There's a whole lot of stuff going on about banks failing uh, and, and other stuff in the news, but not too much is being talked about this. And it could be a pretty major deal uh, considering uh, if there is any truth to it, if, and I understand that that's a big if, but if there's any truth to it, um, if the United States had any hand whatsoever and attempting to strike the Kremlin and attempting to assassinate Putin. That is absolutely massive. Now, of course, these drones, uh, even if they did, you know, actually hit their target, it's highly, highly unlikely uh, that anyone would have been injured too much, especially Putin. He wasn't even at the Kremlin at the time, they say. Uh, so there wasn't any actual threat to him. Uh, but there are claims that there have been other attempts uh, recently and of course, the Russians believe that this is all being done by, by the Americans, or at least orchestrated or supported in some way. Uh, there, there's, it's not a surprise because it's been told from both sides that the that we actually do help the, the Ukrainians in, in identifying targets and things like that. Uh, so it's not too much of a stretch to to say that well, maybe we helped also in this kind of strike. Of course. The Americans and the Ukrainians are completely denying this, uh, saying that this is a false flag, and, and well, that could be too. Uh, you know, it, it could be that Russians have done this to themselves as a some kind of precursor to uh, advance the war. Although, um, I, I, number one, I don't know that they need any reason. I mean, they could just do what they want already. And number two, um, if it is them doing it to themselves, well, honestly, they've just embarrassed themselves for the fact that these drones actually got this close to the Kremlin. It looked to be, according to the video, just a few feet away before they were taken out. So it's it, for me, it's hard to believe that it was the Russians themselves doing it to themselves for a publicity stunt. Now, is this... Is this be the beginning of a real World War III? Probably not. I mean, there's been things already happen. I mean, my goodness, the Nord Stream pipeline blowing up could have easily been the beginning of a of a uh, obvious World War III. I mean, we're kind of already in a World War III. We have been for a while uh, since we are uh, just about exclusively funding this war. Um, you know, we've sent more money. Uh, to Ukraine over the past year, then both Ukraine and Russia combined spend a, a year on their, their military. In fact, we've, spent, we've sent almost double the amount that both Russia and Ukraine spend on their military in a, in a year. So we're, we're definitely funding this. It's, it's that everyone knows that. Uh, I guess the question is, is um, at some point, will we see an escalation? It, there, there's so many things going on, and I think all of us and many others are just trying to figure it out. Obviously, someone knows the truth, <laughs> uh, but it's just not you and I. Uh, I, I kind of wonder if, if this is being drug out uh, on purpose, if the Russians have made some deal with China 
to say, yeah, we'll drag this out. We'll bite our tongue as long as we can uh, to give you, China, uh, the opportunity to get yourselves really ready for a, a, a wide-scale major war. Um, it's possible that that's it. Uh, if Russia wanted to, to destroy Kiev uh, or do major damage in Ukraine, uh, I would think that they would have already had the justification or would have come up with a reason to do so and or would have just done it. Um, the, the past week since all this has happened, uh, most of the Russian officials seem to want to go really into war. They want to absolutely destroy Ukraine. Uh, the news media there and many of their ministers are, are calling for that. They're calling for the Zelensky regime to be taken out uh, and, and Kyiv destroyed. And of course, America is just very quietly sitting by and, 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 and just denying it all. This, I think, can be a very major thing. Um, it's, it's, it's almost, in, in my, my opinion, it's almost worse that these things are happening directly towards Russia and Russia is, is not immediately responding. Uh, they're not immediately saying, all right, then, you know, we're going to, you know, carpet bomb Kiev and, and then they don't do it or, or something like that. The fact that they seem to be holding back, you know, I mean, Nord Stream was taken out. That's a, you know, $18 billion project that was destroyed. Um, they, there's been many incursions into to Russia over the last week or so. Several uh, oil depots in Crimea and inside Russia have been struck. Um, and then now, of course, the, the Kremlin has been attacked. So there's certainly reasons that Russia could say that they want to go in and do some, you know, either use a strategic nuke or uh, much increased uh, attacks and targets inside Ukraine. And it's not really seemed to pan out in my opinion, that's kind of worrisome. Um, it, it really means one of two things, I think. Either Russia just doesn't have the capability to do it. You know, that, that all this talk has just been that. It's been talk and they don't really have the capability. Or maybe they're just afraid. And I doubt that that's the case. Um, <clears throat> or uh, they have some kind of greater plan that they're just, you know, all right, you go ahead. You 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 think that you're you're doing this. You think that you're winning you think that you're really hurting us because we have this really big plan that when the time is right we're just going to destroy everything um the the war the of course on the ukrainian and, and united states side uh they believe that they can have this war wrapped up soon although there are others on the u.s side that say that this war could last for years it's hard to tell there's so much back and forth um and this is uh, my opinion that this war has been uh, unique in the sense that I don't know that anyone on either side other than the people running the show really know what's really going on. I mean, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, actual footage of actual combat. You know, there's not a whole lot of, of, of kind of real proof of what's going on. Most of the stuff that we're seeing, um, you know, could be real, could be easily staged. Um, just not a lot of really hard evidence. I mean, you know, most of the footage that's being shown are a bunch of TikTokers and YouTubers that are over there kind of LARPing around with some Ukrainian unit to make it look like they're actually at war. And all the while, uh, you and I just kind of trying to figure out what's going on and when the threat is actually real to us and is, it, is this actually leading us somewhere else? Um, and I, again, my, my default is starting to become that I kind of think that this is happening um, to kind of distract the world from a bigger war that's coming probably with China uh, in the next months, maybe years, uh, but probably less than that. In the end, a, a conflict involving the United States is almost inevitable. I, I just, I don't know at this point how it could be avoided uh, watching the BRICS nations really uh, build themselves as an alternative to the United States in trade and in currency. At some point, those two people are going to have to square off. Uh, and, and China has made, made it very clear that they intend to kind of rule the world, to be the top of the, of the, the, the dung pile, so to speak. 
And to get to that top, they're gonna have to fight. They're gonna have to fight the United States. And the, the stuff that's going on in Russia and Ukraine, I do believe they're part of it. And it's, it's quite possibly a, a, a kind of a proving ground for troops and also a distraction so that, you know, people will not be focused so much on what's going on in other parts of the world. I think that this is serious and I think that we should take it serious. And, you know, over the next few days, next few weeks, we could see more. I've not seen any specific threats um, from Russia towards Ukraine other than just we should retaliate. Um, and so will, will Russia really retaliate? Will they do something? It's possible. There's been reports that uh, nuclear-tipped warheads have been moved to uh, one of the air bases that houses their strategic bombers. Uh, which is an escalation, uh, you know, indicating that they are setting them up for the possibility of use. Doesn't mean that they will get used, but they're setting it up. Um, there have uh, been, definitely has been an increase in bombing and missile strikes inside Ukraine by Russia, but still uh, not quite to the level that you would expect uh, based on the fact that Russia is now getting attacked on its own soil. Uh, it's, and, and they're attacking um, strategic sites, you know, oil and well, the Kremlin itself. Uh, so I would think that at some point Russia is just going to have to, is going to have to, you know, do something. And, and there's a lot of weirdness, you know, Bakhmut uh, has been a, a major battle for a while. And, and Russia and the Wagner Group has has pretty much got it under control for the most part. Uh, they're controlling about 90% of the city uh, in some really uh, hard street battles. Uh, it wouldn't seems to it wouldn't take much for them to completely destroy it. And yet now it's been announced that uh, the Wagner Group has run out of ammunition, and so they're just going to pull out. So you've done all this work, you've you know fought all of these battles, lost all these uh, troops just so that you can now pull out in the next few days. Um, it, it's strange. There's a lot of strangeness going on. And I know that this happens in every war, but it, it just, at least my perception, is that there's more strangeness going on in this war uh, than ever before. We know that, there's, there, that the world leaders are certainly using uh, the media and the ability to manipulate people now more than ever before. And so it's, it just seems you know, logical that they're using these types of manipulation tactics today. Uh, remember, though, in the end, all of this stuff that's happening, I think it all fits right within the Great Reset, Agenda 2030 takeover of the whole world. That's what they want. They want to keep everything, um, you know, all up in arms. They want to keep people uh, on edge. They want to, keep, you know, create chaos and, and get people angry uh, just so that they can start moving the chess pieces around for their takeover. How that works, I don't know. Uh, and I don't think any of us do know. But what we do know that we can do <laughs> is continue to get ready. Because, <clears throat> again, all this that's happening on the war front, front, whether it's Russia or China or Iran or North Korea or any of this other stuff that's going on, um, there's definitely, uh, it's definitely creating a more dangerous place for the United States and United States citizens. You know, we talked yesterday how there's millions coming across the border and it's about ready to increase at least fivefold, according to the Homeland Security Department. Uh, and, and many of those people coming across the border are known to be uh, not just Mexican or Latin American countries. These are Chinese, uh, very possibly some Russians that are coming across the border. Um, <clears throat> and, and why are they? Uh, are they just coming here for a better life or are they coming here to do damage to us? Uh, so we have to we have to continually prepare ourselves for that because a, a World War III scenario could be very devastating. Uh, I think more devastating than, than most Americans have any kind of realization of. And so continue preparing, getting your houses in order, your, your communities becoming more self-sufficient, uh, uh, building up your means of personal defense because uh, while we may or may not ever see a real Red Dawn moment, uh, the worse the world gets, the more increase of danger and violence to you uh, happens. And so make sure you're, you have the ability to defend yourself and to take care of and protect what you have. Uh, folks, right now is the time to get your houses in order. It's time to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually.
Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.